Well, good morning, everybody. It's an unusual, unusual shaped room, but it seems to work just perfectly. Everybody seems to fit just fine. My, my name is Jeff Mackay. I'm President and Chief Executive Officer of Organogenesis, a regenerative medicine company. I'm also Chairman of the Board of the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine, which is the advocacy group, the multi-stakeholder advocacy group for our field. It, it's a real honor to be before you today. This is the first regenerative medicine investor conference. So it's an important milestone for us who've been in this field for quite a while. And I'd, I'd like to thank the uh, financial firms that have partnered with us, the Alliance, to put it on. Uh, Piper Jaffrey, uh, Maxim, and Burl. So thank you very much. We're very appreciative, and uh, we look forward to a very productive day. There are 16 top small and mid-cap companies that will be before you today. And really what we're trying to do is we're trying to answer a few questions. And, and most importantly, the question that is on people's minds is, where is the field today? And, and that's what we're hoping to have properly addressed before you leave. And, and importantly, is it, is it time to invest? Is it time to pile onto this field? Or is it time to watch and wait? And, and to help address these questions, uh, we'll have not only the, the top companies in the field present, but panels that include some of the foremost key opinion leaders in select therapeutic areas with top industry analysts and uh, the industry leaders themselves. So hopefully that will be very productive and interactive. I think most of us who are here know that this field long ago has uh, proven that in Petri dish you can have cells regenerate tissue. So the, the challenge that has been before us over the last few decades really has been how do we translate this exciting Petri dish science into something that can be measured by impacting patients' lives and importantly by generating revenue and profit. And I think that as a field in 2013, we do have some pretty impressive optimistic metrics to share with you. I think that uh, today there are about 50 available approved regenerative medicine products that, that span hard tissue, soft tissue, wounds, cardiology, oncology, orthopedics, diabetes, and, and oncology or cancer. Uh, we've reached a material level of revenue, about $1 billion in the last year, and about $1 billion in investment of both public and private investment in the last year. So the field has, has really grown over the years. Right now there are hundreds of phase two and hundreds of phase three trials that are in active recruitment and like small molecules and large molecules, they're not all going to make it and turn into successful products. But what we've seen so far is that the attrition rates of these clinical programs are at least as favorable as, as large and, and small molecules. And, and also, although this is a CBER regulated area, so it is very rigorously regulated, often the size of the trials and as a result the cost of the trials are not as formidable as, as big drug clinical trials. And so overall when you factor that in with the attrition rates, the risk profile is actually very attractive for the field. Some other dynamics in the field, if you, if you look at what's going on in academia, I would invite you to find an academic institution in the country and in the world worth their salt that either hasn't already formed a regenerative medicine institute or is in the process of forming one or has a virtual one. But I, I don't know of another dynamic in the field where there's been such a mobilization over the last 10 years. And the amount of academic energy being applied to the field is, is really overwhelming. So then one of the key questions is, uh, wh where is pharma in, in all of this? And I, I think over the last few years, when for those of us that have been going to regenerative medicine conferences, uh, as recently as four, five, six years ago, the pharma companies were sending perhaps mid-level BDNL people to sort of assess the situation. And over time, there have been a series of tangible investments. So there's still caution towards the field, but if you just list off Astellas, GSK, Pfizer, Roche, Smith & Nephew, Baxter, j and think that there is now a critical mass of tangible investment on the pharmaceutical side and on the, uh, the medical device side. So people are dipping their toes in and starting to make investments in the field. And why is that? It's because they see what we see. They see a healthcare system that is out of control in terms of cost containment. They see demographics that are only going to make it worse in the next 10 to 20 years. And hopefully, regenerative medicine 
will complement drugs and devices and provide solutions to some of these truly expensive and debilitating chronic diseases that are currently out of reach for conventional modalities. So we, we hope that you enjoy the day and that it's very informative to you.